So if you saw WCD six point five, I spoke about how the the spiritual issues were surrounding the needlecraft regarding in the European spiritual natures connected to that of bovine and bold veneration, and how vaca is the cow and cowpus became needlecraft became you know that so how it was a wake up moment for me to put me against all needlecraft not just needlecraft i'll never have any of them again and i now realize that now why so many people were anti needlecrafters because they had very good reason to be and there's a hell of a lot of truth to rudolf steiner's assertion about it killing the spirit because it actually came to pass now there's other issues to that as well <clears throat> who was mr who was professor lockdown in the uk neil ferguson what was he previously known for slaughtering all the cows during in england millions of them during the fake and completely bullshit foot and mouth ec epidemic what's happening in this country they're trying to kill millions of cows in this country uh, to stop global warming it is sick beyond words because we're dealing with demonic evil that's running the show <clears throat> that's running the show and the 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 the, 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 the holy sacrament of demonic evils are things like abortion uh, population reduction and in particular they see they're not driven they're not driven by population reduction in order to manage resource they just want to kill people you know understand? they just want to kill people and um, and uh, the same thing with the with the environmentalism they just want to kill cows they're evil Eamon Ryan the minister of the environment guy here the Green Party guy is evil they're either demons they're demons from the abyss who've taken earthly form in the... This is why you look at Greta Thunberg and normal people are instantly horrified. You're looking at a demon, okay? And that's why the whole things like the needlecraft lockdowns and the environmental stuff, the green agenda, the decarbonization stuff, we're carbon, everything around us is carbon. Hell, carbon, carbon nitrogen. You know, these are these are the real gods we should be worshipping, not... These are... Just like Moses, the Abrahamic scourge, punished the pagan children of israel for going back to their bovine their bovine veneration uh, the scourge of this world is just as much anti-nature they want to kill carbon nitrogen carbon nitrogen could be seen as the inheritor of the of the sacred cow in this form and so that they want they just want to kill what made the, the indo-europeans what we are so our sacred cows and that's why they they they, they put the pus of the vaca into our children and into us all to to as, as a violation as a, as a way of saying you know we're your god almost you know and it's always abrahamic rooted this whole thing i'm not putting that saying you're all bad you you christians i'm not saying that at all but anyway that's where it comes from <clears throat> so you know taking that one further you've, you've heard christian morris refer to the needlecraft and the boosters and all that as the loyalty scheme he's absolutely right but what kind of loyalty scheme? I think I made this analogy during the days of the Rona Ronicles. They are Slugwort and we're Charlie. We in the tribes, the one who said, well, you're not putting that shit in me. And there's lots of them who are not in the tribes who said, I'm not putting that shit in me. You go to like Neil Ferguson's videos and other people's videos, uh, and Dr. John Campbell, and they're the comments are the same on the need. And for some reason, I just felt like a mate of mine who said that, and he's, he's not involved in anything like this. And he was said, I just didn't feel it was right for him. I didn't want to put in me. And he wouldn't be a type that'd be given to conspiratorial thinking at all. That was slug. You think of like them as slugwort. And the, 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 go, the gobstopper, the everlasting gobstopper is the needlecraft. And the ones who didn't, who put the, the, the needlecraft syringe or vial on back on Willy Wonka's table, they turned around and said, these are the future. These are the ones who could think for themselves. These are the ones who had the... And, and, he, and there are speeches out there by these globalists that people never look at. And they say things like that the, the university is just... I mean, Klaus Schwab has one, where he said the university is just basically churn out 
uh, Asperger cases with PhDs. They have no creativity. They can't think. And this is why, I've, you hear me making videos about it, you, Western civilization has stagnated since probably the mid-1960s. Nothing new has been invented. There's been miniaturization of existing technology, but there's been nothing new invented. It already was there. The internet is just a, an expansion of the telecommunication system. You know, the microchips are, ju you know, microprocessors are just, an, uh, are just a, an, an extension of transistors and valves and stuff, uh, and even relays. And so it's like, you know, it's only been miniaturized. <clears throat> Nothing new has come along. And if it did, they tacked it like, you know, Ivory the Engine. I will make them. You know, things like that. And um, I think that's what that was now. I think even if they're running a subliminal program, the, the natural order of things, the gods and goddesses chose us to say, no, we're not taking it because they wanted us to inherit this world. They wanted us to reach towards Arcadia. And that's why. And the rest of them were just being wiped out. And the more I meet people, especially young people today, so much like, okay, I do feel sorry for lots of them, okay? Like a woman there on my Facebook group was telling me that the small rural school in rural County Mead now has two classes full of uh, kids who are autistic. And that's all from the needlecraft. And they're literally, they're, literally, they're literally like the blobs in the cartoon. And I'm hearing stories of babies being born to needle-crafted mothers and literally the homoniculums, homoniculuses. Eyes staring into the abyss. And you meet people in their 20s and if you say something to them, when I was growing up, if you met someone who was in their teens or 20s and you said to them something like, uh, something like any offbeat subject, anything, They'd go, oh, wow, that's interesting. Now they go, what? There's almost like an evil spirit in so many young people today. And people in their, especially, well, that's, and there's lots of beautiful young people as well. But I'm just saying, you just see that. It, they're, they're, it's almost like the Chinese Cultural Revolution, uh, egregoric mind virus has now entered the West. And they're killers. You mark my words, they're killers. They are genocidal little beasts. It'll, they, will, they, will ki they will probably start killing in the name of Greta. You just watch, or in Al Gore, people like that, and uh, the rest of us. What we call, what I call, the tribes, are the ones. Are Charlie who put the everlasting gobstopper, and said, "I don't want to." Fuck slugwort. There may have been a point where we said, "Do we need it?" Or maybe so for some of us, some of us, some people. And, and it, but it all we we all we at in the end, those of us put the everlasting gobstopper on on uh, Willy Wonka's table and desk and Slugwort and Slugwort and Willy Wonka both lit up and smiled and said, Charlie, my boy, you did it. So be positive. Uh, you know, I was talking to my friend today and uh, we're, we're both, we were, we were both like in a psychedelic, the two of us were both in like a psychedelic experience. Because she's like me, she talks completely and thinks completely and allegorical and metaphorical. You know, her mind has been infused with Joseph Campbell and stuff like that. And we think, and, and when we're talking like this together, we're almost like in a psychedelic state of euphoria. Because we're able to discuss things, just like on these videos, and you listen to me, in, in these allegorical, mythical ways, you know, mythical ways. You know, my friend Stephen Sutton wrote a song called Misha Era. And if you haven't heard, it's beautiful. And uh, check it out. And it's it's about the resurgence of the goddess Eru. Now, overnight, Stephen is now one of the most, has one of the most popular songs in Ireland. And why did he do it? Because at the crossroads I spoke about in the previous video, he took the road less traveled and Hecate went. The gods smile upon those who take the road less traveled. He didn't wait for a record company. He didn't wait for, he didn't wait for to be on the Late Late Show. He just did it his own way and he got it out there and millions of people will hear that song and cherish it into the future in Ireland and, and around the world. Uh, it, will, it will do what MI5 destroyed in the 1920s when 
they they start they tried to create an Irish race congress in Paris, where uh, a very interesting story. In the 1920s, I think it was 20, 19, just when the country was coming independent from the British, there was a thing called the Irish Race 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 Council or Congress, and it was a meeting of people from of Irish racial background from all over the world, from America, from Argentina, from Spain, uh, France, England, Scotland, Australia, everywhere, or Canada, to try and do what Israel has successfully done with Zionism. We, we, this is one of the great sadnesses for me with Ireland, is we've never been able to do that, unite our diaspora as the same people. Like, if I became dictator of Ireland tomorrow, I would instantly grant citizenship to anyone of Irish extraction, regardless of how far back, if they wanted it. And this would include everybody, including the you know the the black people of Montenegro who are of Irish background. It wouldn't be based on it wouldn't be based on skin color. It would be based on their heritage. Uh, instantaneously overnight, I'd grant them, and uh, they could move here tomorrow. No problem. I would do that, and. Uh, just like Israel has done with, the, with people of Jewish extraction. But what happened was, Sean T. McBride, the, the diplomat, I was reading this bio that she had, later on, he, uh, he was when he became, when Ireland became an independent nation, he became an Irish diplomat. He was in Paris with his wife, and the waiter came up to him and he goes, I know you, you're Sean T. McBride, you were staying in the hotel here with Eamon de Valera uh, during the Irish Race Congress. And he goes, oh yeah, I remember you now, I brought you breakfast every morning. And the, the French raider said, let me tell you what happened. The, on the second day, I was approached by MI5, British agents, who said every piece of newspaper they throw in their rubbish bin, their garbage container in the hotel room, bring it to us. And he didn't really understand the implications until one morning he saw a revolver under Sean McBride's pillow. And he went back and told his wife, I'm not having anything to do with British agents anymore. And that's how they destroyed the Irish Race Congress. Instantaneously. It was infiltrated by MI5 British agents who basically wrecked any idea or any, any, any movement towards an Irish sort of a high, you know, an Eru nationalism, global identity. Which, so Stephen has kind of done that in this song where he mentions the diaspora part at the end. Now, Stephen's step into that was he had to kill off he had to slay the previous dragon, okay? He had to slay it. And that's what the Krusty Horror video was, where he made fun of a, an Irish establishment troubadour. He drew a line under his world and began a new world. And if you read the history of the world, there's a small number of people in every country who changed it because they drew a line under what was and they, they, they took the different path at the crossroads and the gods went, showed them favour. So if Stephen had a, you know, sent demos to record companies, he would have never got on. He would have never. He would have never played. But he did it his own way, just like I've done it my own way with my writing and filmmaking, and I've reached fast numbers of people, because the gods look upon you with favor. Why? Because at some stage in our lives, we all had to put the gobstopper on Willy Wonka's desk, and that's what that's that is the path to fulfillment to true dharma is when you do that you know that song by talking heads how did i get here once in a lifetime i spoke in the previous video this morning wc wdc6 about how the song synchronicity 2 by the police and the concept of uh, the monsters appearing from the depths and that's why the cthulhu and the Lovecraftian thing was so prevalent during the Rona years. And now this, the great, the, 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 the upper echelon is collapsing, the control grid, and we're seeing visions in the sky, okay? Put the gobstopper on Willy Wonka's desk and achieve the Dharma that the gods want you to achieve. And that's what we did when we said no to that needlecraft. And that's that was the difference uh, between winning the grace of the gods charisma which now stephen has uh well he probably always had it but now he's unleashed it okay and he, he's fulfilling his potential and the rest of us you know all of us i mean look at john waters he's banished by the irish times or and the irish establishment but he's probably one ireland's most famous journalist right now why 
because he took the, the, the path at the crossroads that was not the easy one, but the hard one. As John F. Kennedy say, we do these things not because they're easy, but because they're impossible. And that's, that's the, we did the, so always remember that, that you, you've done the impossible. And the gods will smile upon you accordingly. So, uh, so I, I know I bullshitted you there and probably bored the tits off you. But there you go. That's how I'm feeling today. Look after yourselves, you beautiful people. Take the road less traveled and let the gods smile.